What do you want from a camera? Well, I want a viewfinder, an APS-C sized sensor, interchangeable lenses. I want to have full manual control of my exposure settings and focus. I'd like to be able to save my files in RAW mode. And I want a video mode, a mic in jack, and a flip screen. Oh. The Canon M5, a mirrorless camera, comes very close to being ideal. It packs all that into a tidy package with a good grip for a small mirrorless body. And that said, it has some shortcomings and limitations. If you have a few minutes, I'll show you. But you're all, ah, didn't Canon already announce the M6? Yes, they did. But confusingly, the M6 is a lesser camera. Much of the M6 is similar, but the M6 does not have a viewfinder or a flip screen, so you'll save a few dollars. The M6 is not a replacement for the M5, and where does that leave the viewfinderless M10? I'm confused too. Canon sent the M5 over with the M mount 15 to 45 kit lens and included the EF EOS M mount adapter so I could use my EF mount lenses. There are relatively few M lenses, and the kit is, well, so although it's hugely overpowering in size, the 24 to 105 L does make an interesting pairing. The kit lens has a lock. Press the button and turn to release. The 9.5 cm diagonal touch LCD is slightly larger than average, and Canon's touch functionality is more extensive than the competition touch focus and snap, as well as full touch navigation, when the question is how do I... The answer is nearly always touch the screen, as virtually everything is touch enabled. Best in class. The LCD flips down to see it from the front. Front facing usually involves fumbling with the menu, but with touch there's no problem. The poster features here are autofocus with Canon's dual pixel technology, 5-axis stabilization for video, and Bluetooth for connecting to a smartphone. I'll do those first. And then the exposure, focus, color, and drive settings. And then I can't wait to get to Canon's enhanced feature set, more than its competitors. Canon provides a diverse and interesting set of capabilities to demonstrate how digital technology can transform photography, both for novices and experts. There are links in the description below to skip to the section you want to watch. The focus is fast, but particularly in auto modes, there's a considerable lag between pressing the shutter and taking the picture, which meant I often did not get exactly the moment I was hoping to capture. While you watch the M5's 5-axis stabilization at work, I'm also demonstrating its selfie vlogging capabilities with the LCD screen flipped down. Although it's slightly awkward to hold, the 15mm lens does seem ideal for this shot. So I'm shooting in HD 30 frames, and I have all my settings on auto. I'm using the auto movie mode, auto focus with face detect, auto white balance, but I am using the portrait picture mode. Now I've changed to my preferred settings. I've turned to the manual movie mode, I've set the shutter to 1 60th, and the ISO to 100, and because it's such a bright sunny day, the aperture is at f22. And I'm now using a neutral photo style, and I've turned the contrast and the brightness down. And I'm going to leave it to you to judge the picture quality, but I'm happy with these settings, and that means that I don't need to do a lot of adjustments in post. There is one aggravation that I'm left with though, and that's that because the screen flips down, I can't use a selfie stick or a tripod while I'm using this mode. The M5 has Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi. Install Canon's free Camera Connect app on your smart device. Using the camera's Bluetooth settings, pair with your device and the app walks you through the process. The app and the camera are now connected, so as long as the camera is on, the app can initiate a connection to retrieve images, send GPS data for geotagging, or to be a remote control. This is both simpler and more robust than the competition, and turns the app into a truly useful feature. 
And although video isn't supported in the app, the Bluetooth controller can start and stop recording, but in this case, monitor the display on the LCD. There's lots more on offer with Wi-Fi, a whole screen full of options. I didn't have a second camera to try Camera Connect. I already successfully connected to my phone. Although my non-Canon printer recognized the camera, the camera didn't return the favor. Although web service is a bit of a complex configuration process that includes setting up a Canon Image Gateway account, I was able to set up Facebook, Twitter, and email services. Maybe Instagram will be added soon. Once that's configured, as long as there's Wi-Fi, select the image, connect to the service, and post easy. The photo posts in Facebook. In Twitter, it's a link to the Canon Image Gateway. And let's get to the ergonomics. There's good, I'll get to that in a minute, but the bad is the power switch on the left. Battery life is short, so I turn the camera off between shots, and if I'm walking around doing street snaps and holding the camera with my right hand, I now need my left to turn it on. This is a right-handed function on most cameras. And while the lock in the middle of the mode dial is appreciated, it's the hold and turn type, which requires a little more dexterity than the push to engage, push to release lock. I thought I'd get used to this button, uh... The good consists of the four right side control dials, three on top, one on the back. The rear facing EV dial is labeled three steps up, three stops down. If you shoot aperture priority and adjust using EV, this is a perfect arrangement right under my thumb. And incidentally, great on-screen display for setting. The front dial under my index finger is aperture, nicely knurled and beveled exactly where it should be. Now shift to manual and the screen shows what the dials do and provides on-screen buttons for touch operation, all with nice sliders to make the adjustments and a meter. The display hides, which is nice, make it reappear by pressing the AF selector. So in manual, the front dial becomes shutter speed and by default a second rear facing dial left of EV is aperture. That's not so easy to work, so the back dial also controls aperture better and unlike some cameras, it doesn't inadvertently slip into another function. Now watch, when I press the dial funk button on the second rear facing dial, it changes to its other options, which include ISO. However, the selection is temporary and it switches back to aperture. That can be modified in the menu. Use custom function two, screen two, custom controls, then select dials, set back dial funk, register, and then select which functions you'd like to control. And note that several other functions like drive mode can also be assigned. I've set it to ISO as the default. The kit lens has a ramped aperture. It opens from f3.5 at 15 millimeters to f6.3 at 45. The smallest aperture ramps from f22 to f40. Closest focus, 25 centimeters. Shutter from bulb to one over 4,000. There is no setting to select mechanical or optical shutter. The ISO ranges from 100 to 25.6. Auto has only one setting, the maximum. The high ISO settings add grain, but maintain color and sharpness. Focus confirmation and other sounds can be muted. The shutter sound cannot. There is one problem button, and that's the video record button. I found myself inadvertently recording on several occasions, but it is one of seven customizable buttons and off is an option. This screen also provides an alternate ISO setting option. Assign it to the M Fun button, then press and turn any of the three dials. I should note that by default, ISO is also the function activated by pressing the top of the dial. The left of the dial toggles focus mode to manual, and the center opens a quick menu, up and down to choose a setting, left and right to select an option, but of course, as always, touch anything. Incidentally, all of these menus do display explanations for the selections, but these can be disabled in the menu. You could also assign the M Fun button to switch viewfinder and LCD, or as a movie record. The rest of the control set includes a flash button to release the onboard flash, guide number approximately five, info, which cycles the various display options, 
which include a touch-capable interactive viewfinder companion, a histogram, and dual axis level. These options can be extensively customized. The viewfinder has a vertical display option. Fuji is no longer unique with this feature. The histogram can be sized but not moved, and in addition to the standard brightness, there's an RGB option. A lighting optimizer extends the dynamic range, although typically available only for stills, on the M5 it's also a video feature, low, standard, and high settings. There's a setting to disable the light optimizer with manual exposure. Enable highlight tone priority to reduce blown out highlights. This can be useful for performers in the spotlight. Turning this on disables the lighting optimizer. Image quality includes 24 megapixel RAW and a selection of JPEG options. I'd go with RAW plus high quality JPEG. Card and drive storage is cheap. You'll only regret not taking the best quality possible. And for aspect ratios, I go with 3 to 2. The rest are all crops and less than 24 megapixels. The viewfinder is bright and just the right size so I can see the whole image. Diopter on the bottom, I had to push it all the way to the right for my prescription. Viewfinder LCD uses eye detect to switch, but it can be force set in the menu. Another interesting menu option for the display, the very subtle night display, perfect when it's dark. When using the viewfinder, the LCD becomes a touch panel for focus, which is as smooth and fluid as I've experienced. I actually found this more interesting and useful than touch focus on the LCD. There are several options to manage this feature. In addition to disable enable, the position method can be adjusted, as well as the portion of the LCD used. Again, Canon's just killing it with touch features on the M5. Worth noting, the touch panel doesn't work when an external monitor is connected. Let's return to focus for a minute. There are two modes, one shot, usually called single, and servo, usually called continuous. In one shot, the camera locks focus with a soft press. Face detect and tracking work as expected, but there's no eye detect. In addition to face detect and tracking, there is single point selected by touch, there's no control dial to move it, and zone, a large area selected by touch. Manual focus, adjusted using the smaller front ring on the lens, press the expand button, use touch to select the spot, and then turn the front dial for 5 and 10 time views for accurate focusing. There's also focus peaking if you like that kind of thing. On the menu, select level and your preferred color. The display includes a horizontal and vertical level, but the M5 can also auto level, although in-body stabilization must be turned off to use this feature. It is a video feature, watch as it levels the shot when I switch to video mode. There's a crop, but it has a pretty good latitude, although it is tough choosing between a level shot and a stabilized shot. There's a standard selection of white balance options, including a custom setting and degrees Kelvin. To capture a custom white balance, take a still image of a white card, select Custom White Balance, and Set. Advanced settings provide further fine-tuning adjustments. There are eight color profiles, picture styles, selected from the Quick Menu. Press Info or use the Main Menu to fine-tune. There's also a custom setting position. Canon provides three sharpening controls, Strength, Fineness, and Threshold, as well as Contrast, Saturation, and Color Tone. The sharpening controls control the edge definition of objects. These can make images look crisp and video-like, or soft and film-like. Lots of opportunity to experiment. I would err on the side of caution here, although none of the adjustments are dramatic. If you want a flat look, use Neutral, and then reduce the contrast and the saturation. Also try the Creative Assist mode which displays an interactive menu of settings and seems designed for novices, but is more flexible than that. The controls adjust background blur, brightness, contrast, and saturation, as well as color tone, and provide a selection of monochrome filters. Or select Create a Filter on the mode dial for effects. But if you like these, I recommend that you shoot a standard image and then in playback, select Creative Filters to apply the setting you want. That way you have the original image 
and as many creative variations as you want. The high burst mode snaps about 9 images per second. The buffer holds about 25 images, after that about 5 per second. Not great, but respectable. The timer can delay the shutter for 10 and 2 seconds, but is also completely configurable, 1 to 30 seconds, 1 to 10 shots. Canon's hybrid stills video mode records a few seconds of video with each image and creates a digest movie from them. Movies can be recorded in every mode, but not all of them work, like fisheye, which reverts to a standard view. Creative Assist mode works and might be useful to create a stylized image. Some add new tricks. For instance, with the miniature effect, you'll get a speeded up clip. Call me a traditionalist, but I prefer the movie mode. At 1080, there are three frame rates, 30, 60, and 24, no 4K. At 1080, 30 frames, data rate is about 24 megabits. Clips are limited to 30 minutes and are recorded as standard, easy to open MP4 files. In video mode, there are three options, auto, manual, and time lapse. In manual mode, set the shutter and aperture using the dials as shown on screen, then finalize exposure with the histogram by setting the ISO. There's no zebra exposure assist available. Video ISO only goes to 6400, but shutter speed slows to 1 8 to 30. That's an effect I like. There is a standard mic in port and a manual audio level setting. No headphone jack. Incidentally, wind filter attenuator is two settings, which can be set independently. The bendy effects of a rolling shutter seems better than average. When an external monitor or recorder is connected to the HDMI, there's no LCD display. There's no intervalometer for stills, but there is a time-lapse feature. I expected to be able to configure the settings by pressing info, but instead press up after selecting three presets and a custom setting where the interval from 3 to 30 seconds and a number of shots 30 to 900 can be set. The handy display indicates both how long it will take to shoot and how long the finished movie will be. The M5 has an extensive playback menu, which includes the ability to add creative filters and to process raw images with a comprehensive set of adjustments. And of course, touch works to scroll and zoom your images. Battery life from a tiny battery in a small camera is predictably short. It's rated at 295 shots. In echo mode, it's a more reasonable 420, but Canon's power saving mode is so aggressive dimming the screen and powering down so quickly that I had to disable it. First disable eco mode and then the power saving modes for display and power can be changed. A charger is provided but the camera cannot be powered or charged with USB. Canon's M5 is nice, small and light but with all the features that you want from a DSLR. I liked it a lot but wasn't fully satisfied and felt it could be more. I'd love to have had a screen that flips out instead of down, support for 4K video, and USB power would be nice. Canon's interesting, extensive, and creative firmware features and functions will take some time to master. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Comments below. Please subscribe.